baby, say hi. Give him a smile. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead Pater with you. We're gonna get this video made. This is the fourth attempt to make this one video. I just said, forget it, I'm sitting down. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with our audio because we're working with some new equipment and some new things with working with you guys and YouTube and things are changing and in transition with our all of our videos and Facebook and all of this fun stuff. So thanks for being patient with us. So we're going to sit down for a second because really if you are interested in getting a dairy cow, we're going to go through, I've got four post-it notes. I've already written every bit of this out and I want to talk to you about this. So here we go. We're coming straight out of the gate. The question is, is it affordable for a family to have a dairy cow? Can you afford a dairy cow? Okay, do you know what you're getting into? You probably can, but you need to know what you're getting into because these are these things. It's just like, what you know that book, What to Expect When You're Expecting? You go, I wish somebody had told me. So here I am, I'm gonna tell you. So I'm looking at this and talking with you simply coming from the idea of a single family homestead. You want raw milk, you want a dairy cow, but you need to understand what you're getting into. So I'm coming straight out of the gate. So let's talk about money because that's what it boils down to in a lot of cases because simply homesteading is not free. Okay, in a lot of cases, it can be very costly for a lot of people if they don't know what they're getting into and knowing how to maintain what they've got. Dairy cow. Okay, so let's talk about it. So the first thing you need to, talk, to ask yourself is, do you really want the raw milk? Do you really want to put up with the commitment? And I put, I'm saying it just like that because it is a total commitment. A lot of folks get into this lifestyle, as I've said many, many times before, and they quickly get out of it after a year or two or five because they say it was just too much. Sometimes life changes, but the money is also a major factor. So you need to look at when you buy a dairy cow, depending on what you get, you need to know you're going to have that initial cost. That is an obvious thing. You know, you might spend $500 or $1,000 or $1,200 in buying whatever breed of cow that you buy. Uh, you know, you have to also consider, is she bred? What are all the costs of these things? Because you're not going to get a cow uh, that's not bred if, you're, if the goal is to milk her to have raw milk. So there's variables there that you need to understand. Are you going to artificially inseminate her? Who's going to do that? Where are you buying the semen? What are you doing? That all costs money in a lot of cases. So understand, first and foremost, the cost of the cow, is she bred, and all of the above. Now, let's get to the, that seems like uh, most people don't get past that. Where are you going to put her? Do you have acreage? You need acreage to have a dairy cow. Somebody's gonna argue that point, fine, but I'm gonna tell you, the more the better. Some folks ask, well, how much do I need? How much do I need? Some folks will tell you two acres, five acres, 10. I'm gonna tell you, I would love to have for a dairy cow five to 10 at a minimum. Minimum, because you're going to want to let her graze. You're gonna want to use rotational grazing. They eat a lot. You can turn loose a cow out there on a pasture and in days, you're gonna be amazed at how much she can just take it down, okay? Goats in particular too, amen, amen. So you need to understand, okay, so how much acreage do I have? How much is she going to eat? How much does she need? You've got to investigate that. Do you have good supplementation for her? Because if she doesn't get the nutritional value that she needs, she's not gonna be healthy and she's not gonna be a good producer for you. And that's the goal, right? So here's the next thing that we're gonna get into before we jump back into the whole feed idea. Fencing, 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 fencing. You have to have fencing. So if you don't have fencing on your property, you need to investigate what type of fencing you want and how much that costs. Do you need someone to help you? Are you going to hire somebody? There's labor. We use horse fencing on our farm because we have different types of animals and we found that the five foot horse fencing is what works best for us. It has what the four by two squares. Well, let me tell you right now, for the really good stuff, $178 per roll is what you're looking at for that alone. Then you have all the cost of all the T posts that you're using or all the different types of things that you're using out there. Have you priced those lately? They're not exactly cheap. Then you have to look at the gates, the labor, the time involved, and the gates. Are you adding electric? I think I said gates twice, but you get the point. 
check out the gates. Really good gates, depending on their size down there, they can cost you $75 to $125 each. And you're going to probably want multiple accesses to your pasture for different reasons. So think about that as well. So fencing, whether you have electric or not, you could be getting into a thousand, a couple thousand dollars, depending on how much land you're trying to fence and exactly what you're trying to use. That varies, but know that possibility. Okay, so let's say you have all of this pasture and you're wanting to have a grass-fed cow. Okay, well that's fine and dandy. Uh, that's going to require maintenance at some point. So understand that you're just not going to throw her out there and not at some point have to probably reseed. Do you have to lime? Do you what? What do you have to do? Again, this is this varies, and all of this will. But understand the potentials there, and I want you to think about it. Okay. So let's say you are only do, using a couple of acres. You're probably going to have to buy hay particularly in the winter. So no, going into fall or late summer going into fall, you are going to have to buy hay. Whether you choose the large round bales or the square bales is up to you. We buy the square bales. It's easier for us to have less waste for our farm. It costs, a, on a good day, $5 a bale for good for pretty good hay okay or uh, or some type of mix so understand that you're gonna have to buy hay most likely you're gonna have to supplement her with that be, uh, to, to offset this the grass situation the pasture situation they need it and also it's gonna cost you money she can go through some I talked to a dairy a farmer uh, just a, a little while ago and uh, a couple weeks ago and I said how much do you think a, a cow would need he said probably up to a half of half of a bale a day so if she's going through a bale every two days, do the math on that. That's how many you're going through a week. Amen. Now, when you're milking her, let's talk about that. So let's say um, you are having to supplement her already, and you're definitely going to have to supplement her with feed when you're milking her. What do you think she's going to be doing while you milk her? She's going to be distracted by eating, and that eases her. It makes her happy, and that allows you to milk her, right? Yes. Well, starting out for a while, even if you have a calf, you're going to be milking that cow twice a day. I have to milk my cow twice a day. Even if the goal is to get her down to once a day in a couple of months, because it helps ease my schedule, you're still going to have to supplement her. These cows, when they start pouring the milk, I have a Jersey Holstein, and when they start pouring that milk, they start losing weight. Their body focuses on needing a lot of water and a lot of protein and a lot of things to supplement giving you that milk. You're going to have to feed her. Have you? looked at the cost of feed lately. What are you going to feed her and how much does that cost per bag? My non-GMO feed right here costs me around $10 a bag. It's 14%. I need at least 16%. So I have to boost that with a basic mix of sweet feed and different oats and different things like that just to try to give her more and to, to round her out her diet and to boost her protein in particular is what I go for. So I am going to be going through in a week's time and heavy milk, low side, two, if not three bags of feed per week. Average $10, low scale, that's $30 a week. So know that going in. Know that as a potential. You may think, oh, I'm going to have this cow. I'm going to put her out here. I'm going to get her a couple bales of hay in the winter, and that's going to be all that I do. No, it's not. Understand what you're getting into with that cost right there and the potential for you because what you think is going to happen is not. You're going to need straw. You will need straw because you know what? Did you think about the fact that you're going to probably have a stanchion? And are you going to have concrete floor? There's, there, well, there's a cost right there. If you don't have a stanchion or a stall or something at least simple that's going to be covered and clean and somewhere that you can keep her stable and safe for you to milk, it could be a simple thing, but you're still going to have to build it. You're still going to have to come up with the raw materials in order to make that happen. Would you prefer more like a mini barn or a barn in, at all? Go price the five. Think about if you want a pretty good sized barn and you build it from scratch and you want it done right, uh, you're looking at the price of a, a nice car. So just letting you know that right there. So it depends on what you've got, what is your setup, and if you ha are coming from nothing, understand and know you're going to want a nice setup for your cow to be milked in because there's going to be a lot of days you're in rain, you're in wind. What if it's snowing? What is your climate? Think about that going forth and how you're going to do that and supplement that. Okay, so we talked about that, talked about that, talked about feed. What about minerals? Have you priced minerals lately? You're going to have to give your cows minerals. You don't want her mineral deficient. You do not want that. I also supplement with kelp. My minerals alone for a 50 pound, is it a 40 pound or 50 pound bag? I think it's 50. Is that right? 
$25 a bag. And cows need minerals just like goats do. So you're gonna have to be giving that. So if you're going from even goats to cow, understand you already have a lot of this in your mind and you have a no brainer, but you need to understand the amount changes. It's not like milking a goat. You're not gonna have a, a 40 pound bag of minerals last you six months and you just have a hundred dollar milk stand set in the corner of your, you know, uh, right here underneath my, I could milk a goat right here ne up next to my house and take her back out, way to go. Can I, I'm not doing that with my cow, she's way too big. So understand the cost of your minerals. If you supplement with kelp, kelp on a low side, I, I get a killer deal on kelp, a 50 pound bag. Uh, it really helps us out here on the farm, it's $64 a bag. And from what I understand, we are getting a tremendous deal there. Do you think you might have to call a vet to your house every now and then? Probably so. You're probably gonna try to do most things on your own as much as possible, but know that when the vet comes, the vet costs money. And what all is involved in terms of what the vet does is also gonna cost money. And also what the vet does is gonna require a potential head gate. Because, you know, think about what they might have to do and are you going to have to keep that cow still? Some vets won't even come and do certain things unless they have a head gate to keep that cow completely stable, to keep the vet out of danger and to not harm the cow as well. So think about a head gate. Have you priced those lately? You could be in the hundreds of dollars depending on your setup there, letting you know the potentials. Um, if the vet's not coming to you and you might need to go take the cow somewhere, take her to be bred, take her to have her hooves trimmed, have you thought about that? Take her to the vet. We can take our cow to our vet. You're gonna need a trailer. Do you have a trailer? Have you priced trailers? I know you see those beautiful horse trailers that people are riding up and down the road. You know, you pull in the gas station, you see a trailer with two big old horses in it. You're like, oh, you know, da, da. well, that was probably a five or $6,000 trailer sitting there. So, or who knows? Because we have priced trailers in the very basic used old things with needing maintenance started at eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars yes sir yes ma'am okay so we talked about that we talked about trailer thinking about getting her hoods trimmed kelp minerals water and electric okay so we we kind of touched upon the idea of electric fencing how are you going to keep that electric are you going to buy solar are you going to do solar panels well okay that's fine and dandy you got to go get those what if you connect her to the grid which is what we do we're going to our, our electric fencing all on the grid because i'm gonna zap you okay <laughs> things get zapped around here okay uh so you, that's going to make your electric bill go up. I have an entire separate bill for the bill for the electricity of my barn every single month. I have an entire separate idea of how much my water bill is as well. If you're not using rain catchments, if you don't have a pond or something to supplement with your water situation, and even if you do, is it the do you really want her in it? Ideally, I don't want my dairy cow getting down in a pond. When I am milking her and she is in milk, and even though I can clean her till the cows come home as they say I don't want her in dirty water because I don't want anything a bacteria or whatever getting up into her teats I don't want her to get an infection I don't want mastitis that's another whole issue in itself so we supplement her with water when it's hot and she's in milk and she's hangry and she wants to come up here and she's just eat and eat and eat and she's eight and eight and eight and she wants to drink, you'll watch that water just go right on down and you gotta refill it again. That's a water bill every single month that you're gonna be adding to your monthly, yearly, weekly budget. So we talked about fencing, we've talked about feed, we talked about hay, we've talked about some straw, um, we've talked about um, the trough. Okay, we haven't even touched upon your supplies to milk her with. You sure you don't want to help your local farmer and just get into a herd share and pay $10 a week to get a gallon of milk? Because if you get a cow, let's say you get a young cow, two or three years old, she if, she, if you maintain her health and you maintain her schedule, by the time she's five, six, seven, eight years old and she starts getting into what's known as her prime, you're going to have so much milk, you're not going to know what to think about it. You're going to probably have to have assistance at some point to help you with milking her. Not just a calf. I'm talking about a milk machine. you got to strip that girl out, okay? Uh, you really want to make sure you're doing that, which calls for, we're looking at getting a milk machine. The one that I'm looking at, which you can, again, they vary, so you can get more or less. Um, we are already bracing ourselves for a thousand dollars plus you're gonna have to have all your milk supplies you're gonna want stainless i'm sorry if you can 
eventually tread your way into it more nice stainless supplement items your filters and then you're gonna have your actual filters you're gonna have your cone all of these different things they cost money and they continue to cost money okay your filters and all of these different things you're gonna have to have items to store them I prefer to use glass I use the large half gallon uh, mason jars Clearly, you can reuse them, but they will cost money. So a milk machine, your milk supplies, your cleaning supplies, your what if you need extra troughs to feed her in to keep her food up, out, safe, clean as possible. Those cost money. They start at $75 for really good ones because you're going to want it up. You got to get away with inexpensive tubs and different things like that. We've done that. But as time presses forward, you will be upgrading the things that you're using because it makes your milking experience better for you and for her both. You're gonna have to feed a calf. Did you think about that? Because it's only gonna milk from her, it take milk from her for so long. And at some point you're gonna have another cow. You have gone then you've gone from one cow to adding another beast. It's a smaller beast, but you'd be surprised. So you're gonna have to start maintaining the feed and the maintenance of that animal as well. Will you need a vet for that? Because why have a calf if it's going to end up being malnourished or have health problems and die? That defeats the purpose. Now, there are ways to obviously supplement and offset costs. If your goal is to sell your milk and get into herd shares, that's going to help you. Uh, making items, bartering items, uh, bartering labor to help you, you know, to get hay at a lesser cost. Or maybe you can borrow somebody's trailer. All of these things go for that idea. But I'm letting you know those things may not always work out. Okay, I just skimmed all of these topics, every one of them. Oh, I forgot one. Refrigerator. We mentioned the head gate, but the refrigerator. I'm probably going to have to buy another refrigerator. My indoor refrigerator that I already have, you already have your stuff in there, your own personal stuff. Imagine trying to add several gallons of milk to that every single day. You gotta freeze it, you gotta chill it. I chill mine for 60 minutes, and then you gotta plop it over into the refrigerator. After about three days, your refrigerator is taken over by milk. Yes, ma'am. So even if you buy an inexpensive refrigerator, just know that likely that's probably gonna be a cost that comes to you because why milk it if you don't can't properly store it? Your waste, it's a whole entire waste of that precious commodity for you and your family. So letting you know about that too. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Thank you for being patient with us on our audio and all the things going on right now. And we finally have sunshine. So I just said, this video is crazy. They've got to get this information. People are making major commitments and decisions in their life in terms of their homestead. And I, I just had a lady just the other day, uh, She, another lady, she was getting onto my live stream and she was like, I need to know. And I'm like, we're going to handle this. So I'm glad we got to just sit down, take a 17 minute uh, water break from all the things that we're doing and I hope this helped you out. The goal is not to discourage anyone from homesteading or to becoming a milkmaid and having a wonderful dairy cow or even a goat. We just want you to understand that there is a lot of time commitment, there is a lot of commitment for your family and schedule, but there's a big commitment for your farm and for your budget. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest like I said and we will talk to you soon.